Hello friends. In this video, we will learn Amazon S3 multi-part upload API. We will dig into a code, but before that, I will give you explanation how it works and when we need to use it. So Amazon S3 have a constraint that in a single put operation, the largest object that can be uploaded is 5 GB. Now, if you have a requirement or you want to upload an object of size greater than 5 GB, then you should use multi-part upload API. As multi-part upload API allows you to upload a single object as set of parts, each part is a contiguous portion of the object data. In case you also want a functionality where you want to resume or pause the download or upload, in that case also you can use multi-part upload API. Uh, multi-part upload is a three-step process. First one is initiate an upload or start an upload. Uh, second one is upload object. And the third one is complete upload. So now I can show you that how it works. I can, as you can see that I have created a form here with a browse element and an upload button. Also, here I'm logged in into my AWS account. And you can see I have created a bucket with the name AWS practice bucket. This bucket is empty as of now. So we will upload a file from here and you can see it in my AWS account. Before you upload or perform any operation, I just uh, request you to check your permissions, your course permissions, if they are properly configured or not. Because if course is not properly configured, you are going to get an error. And for multiple multi part upload, you also need to expose e tag header. So this was the most important part. You might face this error if you are not going to enable it. So it keep on giving you expose header, e tag header. Also, I'm using allow origin star. You can change it as per your need. This was just for a dummy purpose. So you can change based on your requirements. You can allow your server or whichever call you want. You can change it accordingly. So let me upload a file here. So I'm just selecting this file of size around 30 MB. Okay. And I'm going to uncleaning my network log and I press upload. So you can see all, all requests are completed now. Uh, now, let me show you code first, and then we'll go to a bucket and I'll, I'll, I'll explain other things. But before that, let's check in uh, AWS that if file is uploaded or not. So you can see, any connect win, I have this file got uploaded, 30 MB of size. Okay, now let's look into the code, and then I'll explain you what these requests and how, what was happening around here. So I'll start with the front end code. So you can see here the very first call that I, the file handler function is responsible for uh, for handling the file changes if there is any file change or getting the file name and file data. Then you can see the very first call that we are triggering is a start upload. So start upload is used to get the upload ID, which acts as a primary key for for the process of for this whole process of upload. I'll explain you in a minute that where all I'm going to use upload ID, but for now let's let me let me go on to the another step. So once you have generated the upload ID, we have to generate a preside URL now for each part of the object. Part size can vary from it can be vary from 5 MB to 4.9 GB or less than 5 GB because if it's more than 5 GB, you can't upload it. So here I take in a part size of 10 MB for now. And as you can see, we are running a loop here to get pre-signed URL for each part. So inside this loop, we are making a service call to get the pre-signed URL for each, each 
each part. Now every request we are sending upload ID also. You can see this. For each file we are sending an upload ID also. This upload ID, the upload ID that we have got here, we need to use it here as well as in last call also. So for each part we are sending an upload ID. Once we get the pre-signed URL, we'll just put the part into AWS bucket. The response of this API is present of this URL is used to put object in S3 and return E tag. So once you put the object in S3, it will return you an E tag. So this E tag is mapped with a part number. Okay. Let me show you some whatever we have covered. So as you can see, the very first call was a start upload, and the start upload returns an upload ID. So this upload ID is used in every pre-signed in, in every get upload URL call to get a pre-signed URL. The next six step we are calling a get upload URL. In each call, we are sending a part of 10 MB. Okay, and this returns a pre-signed URL. Let's see here. This pre-signed URL contains all the details when it gets expired, the date. And other details. Once you have a pre-signed URL, you need you can directly upload a file to server S3 server. You can see that that directly goes to S3 server. Okay. So uh, I'm showing you this get upload one, right? This I'm sending a part number and upload ID, and then it sends me a response of pre-signed URL. Once you have a response, you hit a S3 server and upload your part. So here you can see, I'm just sending out, I'm just calling, making a put call on this S3 server, sending out my part with upload ID. And in response of it, returns me a E tag. Okay, so this E tag is mapped with this part number. So I'm sending out a part number to which have an e tag this. Now the final call that we have to make is complete upload. So once all your parts are uploaded, you just have to call a complete upload API, sending out all your parts with their e tag associated with them and upload ID. AWS verifies all part numbers and e tags are correctly mapped or not and the upload ID associated with them is same the one was generated initially. In case of any mismatch it throws an error and do not save object into a bucket. Okay so the final call I will show you this upload one see I am making upload call here I am sending out all the e tags associated with the part numbers and an upload ID with a file name. So AWS verifies that the part number generated for one, but the e tag generated for part number one is same, the one was responded back or not. If there is any mismatch, it's going to fail. So this one is part number one, and e tag is e tag that we have received from AWS is this A415. Now if I go here and look back again, you can see. A415. Yeah, that's it. That's how the multi port upload API work. From the front end, but I'll, I'll give you a brief introduction, brief description about the back end also. So here you can see I have three APIs start upload, get upload URL, and uh, complete upload. And uh, so to run this back end code, you need an AWS bucket name. The one I showed you earlier that I have created a bucket with the name AWS practice bucket. And also you need to you need access key ID and access secret secret key. Signature version I'm using v4. To generate access key ID and access secret key, you just need to go on your IAM. It's right here, IAM. And then you will be landed on IAM page. Here you can see a users. So go to users. 
you can add new users. Once you add a user, you can see here a security credentials. In security credentials, you can create access key. I have already created. So I have already created the maximum limit that I have. I can't enable it for now, but you can create once you once you are logged in. I have given a Git repo URL in description. You can clone or download a code uh, at your end. In case you find any issue, put them in a comment or raise it at a GitHub. Thank you so much.